to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mountain Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And this is season five, and this is episode two. It's called Walking a Tight Rope. Tight Rope. And this this is a good episode. The, the ladies are getting when these be gave. Um, I think this is gonna be a really, really good season. And one thing I will say for sure is Mary J. Cosby is bringing it. But I do have some thoughts on how things went down towards the end. And really all the ladies are bringing it. And I think they all got the memo that they need to do that. Because after everything that happened last season, you already know. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the episode. Because um, a lot happened. This was a little bit of a longer episode um, than the first episode, actually. Um, so the episode, starts, that, the episode starts with Bronwyn and Ashley. They're recapping the event in her car. So And it's in um, Lisa's car. Um I think they're on their way to something. I don't think we ever got to where they're on their way to, but <clears throat> anyway. And um, Bronwyn um, talks about, so when they're recapping the event, they talk about a couple things. So they talk about, so Bronwyn talks about Brittany and Mary. Bronwyn loves Mary. No problems there. Um, which honestly for a newbie, that's quite interesting because that. Mary don't get along with a lot of people. So the fact that Mary is being a lot more engaging this season and she is getting along with certain people, of course, it's based on complete vanity, but I mean, it's a very Libra thing of her because <laughs> we, I, I found out that Mary's a Libra and I was like, child, this makes sense, which also might mean I might get along with her. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, I usually get along with Libras because I'm a Libra moon, Aries sun. You know, the things, but we're not talking science today. Let's get back into the, so, um, the episode. So also, um, and also forgive me ahead of time. I've been having issues with this eye. So if I pick at it, don't judge. Um, I keep getting, I don't know what's going on, but anyway. So Bronwyn, Bronwyn don't, don't care for, um, for um, Brittany, first impression wise. And I mean, Brittany was kind of a, a stumbling idiot when it came to like her words. So the first impression wasn't great. I probably would not have got along with her either. It was very, ooh, ting too much. Um, but then also to um, what's also mentioned is the Lisa and Angie situation. Lisa isn't really caring too much about the Whitney situation because that's an ongoing thing. But what Lisa's extra hurt by is the fact that Angie um, went back to tell Whitney what Heather and her were talking. When when Lisa was talking to Heather and um, Angie in confidence about the situation. So she feels a way about it. And... So as we're talking about it, Angie literally calls Lisa on cue on in the like on her phone. So she's on speaker. Um, Lisa, um, before she answers or before she says something, she like has brown ones like, "Hey, can you be quiet for a moment?" And basically, <laughs> the Greekness of Angie is she was trying to give an olive branch because that's what she does. And she does ask for a one-on-one. -on -one. And um, Lisa accepts, and she was not expecting that. And then that's kind of how that starts off. The episode starts. And then we get a little bit of a montage where Whitney and her family are unpacking. Because if you saw the, fir the first episode, Whitney just moved to that new house, but there was nothing in that house when um, Angie showed up. And But it won't be for too long, clearly, because now the, the family's unpacking. And um, Angie is recapping the event with her husband, Sean. And Angie, girl, that is a beautiful man. You did that. I, every time I see him, I'm like, she did that. <laughs> she did that. Um, but Angie, she basically is expressing, look, I was kissing Lisa's behind the previous season and just in general trying to like I was basically a try hard and I'm over it I ain't doing that anymore and I love that that Angie is getting a backbone 
My only concern, only concern with her is I hope she's not doing that with Mary because Mary has a very strong personality as well, but we also know that Angie has a very strong personality too. And hopefully, also too, I don't think she is. I think honestly, Mary and Angie are organic because Mary can see through when you're trying too hard and she don't like it. And that's kind of why, and we'll get to it later. And um, that's why Mary and does not like Brittany. She does not like try hard attitude. And that's why Mary has never really liked Heather. She doesn't like try hard attitude. She don't like it. Like it comes off fake because it kind of is. Um, and being she's in an environment that's Utah, that's predominantly white, I, I get it. I do get it. Even though Mary's problematic, but I get it. Not me making somehow bringing this back and making this about Mary. You already know I was going to do that. But anyway, let's go back to the original subject. Um, Mary, speaking of Mary, she's actually recapping with her son how the event went. And um, that's the montage that happens. But then we do get a brief scene where her uh, Mary is opening up about a little bit about what's going on with her son, but she ain't going into it yet. We we do see in the when they show the highlight of how the season's gonna go, we are gonna see what's really going on. And if you haven't been paying attention, um her son has got some issues. Um he has some issues. I don't want to spoil it for people who are not following things on social media. I want y'all to just see it as the episodes transpire. I'm aware of all the things because I've been kind of paying attention to it because it kind of was, you know, it it, it, came, it was out there. But um, she does share kind of allude to it that her son is staying at home. He doesn't have a job. He dropped out of school. Basically just kind of living off of her. And yeah, I don't, so far nothing was mentioned about the wife because we know that she, he, last season he randomly married, like got married um, and Mary didn't know that he got married. Um, but I think this season we're going to see the real Mary more and not the kookiness of Mary. I think we're going to get to it. And you can tell this season she's being... She's not doing her. She's still doing her because Mary just in general is just entertaining and that's just how she is in general. But I do feel like Mary sometimes put it on. I think last season she was putting it on. She wasn't really being herself all the way. I And that maybe it actually is a relationship she has with Angie that's helping her actually do that. Because so far, and maybe I'm judging it too quickly, I think we're seeing a different side of Mary, but old, old Mary J. Cosby did come out at the end of, towards the end of the episode. But anyway, that's a little bit of that. Let's go back to where we were at before. So back in Lisa's car, Bronwyn um, is discussing her daughter Gwen with her. And then Lisa goes to pick up Heather at her place. And they basically continue to recap the event, um, Lisa's party. And they, at this point is when they're talking about Whitney. And Heather has some regret about how they handled it. She's like, I feel like, I'm not sure, do we gang up on her? I feel like we kind of did. And yeah, y'all kind of did. <laughs> I mean, I ain't gonna hold you, you kind of did. Whitney is not my favorite person by any means, but like towards the end, I kind of felt bad for her. I was like, damn. <laughs> like, y'all just all went, ugh. And so Bronwyn, she just kind of turns it on and she's like, I don't think y'all went, I don't think y'all gained up on her. She just kind of put it on and kind of gave extra sauce. And she's like, yeah, the way, Whit and kind of making fun of how Whitney was like, my healing, my healing, just doing the most. Because Whitney was doing the most. Well, I mean, two things can be true. She kind of was doing the most. But because of Bronwyn being so strong and opinionated about her thoughts, Heather is threatened and triggered because 
Dang, you can't have a strong opinion. You got to do what Heather does and kisses everyone's butt at the beginning and be a tryhard and then have a strong opinion later on. I, I'm sighing, Heather, because it's a pattern. Yes, Monica was a bad seed. We know that. But you can't just put that on everyone's jacket that seems like they might be the it girl. Because I'm noticing also two things can be true. <laughs> she feels a way about people who are toxic, but the toxic people so far on this show have been the it girl. So I think Heather has a little bit of a point because we all know Bronwyn like that yet. But I'm always going to side-eye Heather because Heather has a pattern when it comes to this as well. And I think, you know, that's just my opinion on it. But anyway, but Heather does share in her confessional with that being said that she don't trust Bronwyn uh, because of the strong opinions. And so she does say up front, she's like, yeah, I feel like I might have to like gang up. Like, um, I feel like we're, I'm going to reach out to Whitney and just clear the air. And I did notice Bronwyn kind of gave a look. I don't know if that was editing or what it was. And um, yeah, we'll see on that. Um, yeah. Next, we have... Ma and by the way, I think these episodes are going to be super long because I just... The more... I, there's a lot of people who are on the show. There's two friend ofs and I think there are, what, seven housewives? Full time? That's a lot of people. Anyway, so we basically get um, Meredith and Seth and they're doing a date night and it's a cooking class thing. And she mentions that Seth has a new job and he's in Columbus, Ohio now. And can y'all remind me what Seth does? I forgot what he does. Um, but he apparently he has a new job and he, he basically never is at home. And But um, Meredith is like, I think now is a good time to teach him how to cook because he don't know how to cook. And so, but they did um, this cooking class thing that they decided to do, which by the way, I do want to do one of those. Um, I'm going to do that as probably maybe a girls night instead or like a night with the friends because you already know I ain't dating nobody. Me and one thing that I did agree with Heather in this episode was a dating situation, but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. We'll get to that when we get to that. But I, I would like to do one of these classes. It'll seem kind of cool. But anyway, so there are, the dish that they're cooking is, to me, I've seen it before. I've never actually had it myself. I actually want to try to make it myself as well. It does seem like it's um, an Israeli dish, but I think it's actually a Middle Eastern dish, so I think it's anything that's... A, it, it's, it's very known for that region, not just Israeli, but I think um, this is the same dish that... Um, it is the same dish. You know what I don't think about? It is the same dish that Aaron made from Amroni, um, who's also Jewish. So it actually checks out. But anyway, I forgot what the dish name is, but it did look good. And so they cooked it, and then they fast forward. They're eating the food. And then Meredith shares that she feels really more connected with her heritage more than ever because of everything that's going on with the war. I'm not going to get into the war more than that, but because we know that Meredith is heritage wise. So outside of like, I, we, we, we know that she doesn't, she practices, but she don't really practice, but she actually is like Israeli. And so she basically states that she wants to do a bar mitzvah. And with Meredith, you always look at her side eye because you're like, are you doing this for a storyline? Or do you really mean it? But Seth helped sell it for me because Seth got really, really emotional. And he's also, he's also, you know, Jewish as well. So it seemed genuine. But the reason why I'm sighing her because a bar mitzvah is normally done when you're like 12. And I've never heard of it before. And even her, even her kids sighed I her later on in the episode about the situation. Um... Because it's normally done as a coming of age thing. I don't know if it can happen like it does for... So Christianity, when when we have kind of like become part of the church, we get confirmed. 
And normally that happens, at least in Lutheran. I'm not going to speak for Catholicism because I think you can do that at any time with Catholic, like with Catholicism. But with Lutheran in general, usually that happens when you grow up in the church like in eighth grade. So when you're like 13, 14, 15, depending on how old you are, when you're in eighth grade. Um, for me, it was 14 because it was towards the end of the year when that happened. It's kind of like part of like, it's like a graduation before the graduation. At least in my case, it was because I went to a Lutheran school. So anyway, I don't know if it's the same situation when it comes to Judaism because I'm just not as versed. But I did find it fascinating and kind of cool to bring to bring light to it because um, I'm not I don't want to make I'm, I'm not trying to for real make fun of it, but it's just because it's Meredith. But um, the thing is, you know, you get to learn the Torah, you get to learn how to speak Hebrew, all those things. And, um, yeah, so hopefully it's followed through and we actually see it. It's not just for the party and the coins because her, her kids shaded her and did ask that question. This is the reason why, um, later on in another scene. But anyway, it ends there. Child. So from there, we do have, um, Angie and Lisa, they have a one-on-one -on -one, and they meet at like a restaurant and um, Angie tries to share how, why she left with Whitney. And she's like, I feel like y'all are all ganging up on her. And yes, Angie wants to talk it out, but she wants to slowly talk it out. I don't know, like a normal person and kind of go over it. And Lisa, I'm speaking directly to you. You did not give her an opportunity to talk at all. You took over the conversation. You made the whole thing about you. And you weren't hearing her out at all. And um, with this, there's definitely some residuals from last season. Because this was already starting to happen towards the end of last season. But it got overshadowed because of, you know, the Monty stuff of it all. And what it is, is that... Lisa will not, Lisa wants yes people. That's how it comes off to me. And the problem was, and I don't think she necessarily wants yes people, but I think Lisa has a tough time. If you present yourself that way, she expects you to stay that way. And also too, Lisa isn't willing to change, evolve, or none of that. And it's like, Lisa, I get you're in your late 40s, but like, you saying you're gra brash, aggressive, and all that, and that's just how you are. I'm not going to change it for nothing or anything like that. How does that equate to you being a good friend if you don't listen to criticism and you don't, you're not willing to evolve? Don't worry, I'll wait. Because I'm sorry, when it comes to this situation, I am going to take Angie's side on because Angie does seem like she's trying, and you did not let her talk at all. Now... And we also find out in the confessional, Angie actually was coming from a good place when she tried to, when she talked to Whitney about it. I don't think, I think Whitney, I think, honestly, I think Angie should have stayed out of it. So it, it clearly wasn't the correct approach. But because Angie has that try hard in her a little bit, I think this is how this happens. This is, this is literally a case of what happens when you're a try hard. You try a little too hard and you end up fumbling your words and messing things up, which is why you should never be a try hard. <laughs> Moral of the story. And um, Angie, she knows that now. But basically, the reason why she went to Whitney to even talk to her about it was she wanted to maybe have help Whitney hold herself accountable on her part. And basically, she was trying to mediate it. But the problem is she did say that. So I don't know if that's really what she was trying to. I feel like she was trying to do that, but I don't know. It just, it just wasn't right. Things clearly wasn't right. And, but like, um, Lisa never got to hear that because she didn't let her talk. And then afterwards, and she just stormed away and left. So nothing was resolved. And my whole thing is why meet her there if you weren't willing to like resolve anything. But I think all that Lisa wanted was an apology. And Angie was not going to give that to her. Because there's no need to give an apology without an explanation. Like, there's no conversation. And 
Angie seems like she's one of those people that needs to have a conversation and actually needs to iron things out, actually, and not just apologize and you don't know what you're apologizing for type situation. Um, because Lisa doesn't hold herself accountable like ever. And really, I think towards the end of the episode, Angie's not going to be the only one that calls her out on it. I mean, Whitney's been called her out on it. That's really the issue that's happening with Whitney and Lisa is that. Um, but Whitney just is horrible with her words and she just always wants to talk feels. And it is, that is annoying too. But anyway, <laughs> a lot of these women are just annoying. So none of them get to any conclusion because they're just annoying. They don't know how to communicate. But that's a whole other thing. Moving on. So next we meet Bronwyn's husband and Bronwyn. They're at their house. And the style of the house is very much... Um, an art museum, but like a modern art museum. Like, I like it. I ain't gonna hold you. I kind of do like it. It's a little, it's a little all over the place, but I, ain't gonna, I do kind of like it. But I will say initially when we met her husband, I was weirded out like immediately because the age difference is age differencing. I mean, he does look like a daddy, literally. And for me... I project a lot, clearly. Y'all already know I do that. And so I'm looking at this, I was like, ew. <laughs> that was my first reaction. But no, but when she broke it down, I was like, oh. She did explain how she met. Um, she met she met him when she was like at a finance conference or something like that, when she lived in San Francisco. And he basically hit on her, but she didn't realize he was being, she was being hit on because the shelteredness of Mormonism. And so, um, but yeah, she ended up taking him up with his offer. And then she also found out that she's talked, she, so she ended up talking about like the Palm Pilot situation and all that good stuff, because basically he's like, that's the guy who came up with all that, the Palm Pilot. He's that dude. So yeah, I get it. <laughs> I got it after that. But she does seem like she really does love him because she talked about how funny he really is and witty. And the more he talked, I saw the charm. And then as, so then in the same scene, the interior decorator shows up because they're just piece by piece trying to make every single room like extremely eccentric. So they have the dining room that's like really empty looking. Um, and they're gonna, they're gonna make it eccentric. And, but they lived at this place for two years, according to Bronwyn. And it's just taking them time because she's a perfectionist. That's just what she's telling us. And, um, not that, I, I'm not saying that as if I don't believe her, but I just don't know. You know like, we don't, we don't know her. We're, we're getting to know her. And a lot of these housewives do be lying when it comes to, like, the housing situation. So, yeah. Anyway. So... And this franchise is the franchise as a history of it. So that's why I'm using, I, I, I'm not going to assume. <laughs> Never going to assume what comes to this franchise. Child. Um, but anyway, so we also did, um, Bronwyn does also open up about her relationship with her daughter, Gwen. Gwen is only her child, not her husband's child. Um, the dad didn't want anything to do with it. Also, her child is the reason why she got kicked out of BYU. And um, she's a little too close to her daughter. And her daughter is so ready to get away from her. And not in a bad way, but like, you know, they are very close to each other. And she's ready to go off and be an adult. And Bronwyn's taking it a little bit hard. So that's what's happening there. And... Um, Anyway, overall, it was a decent scene. Um, we did get to know more about Bronwyn. And I still know how I feel about her. I still think I like her. I still think so. But I don't know for sure. I feel like I do, though. Because my Libra side loves fashion. <laughs> I'm kind of a little vain, too. So I, I like her because I'm a little vain. So, yeah. Anyway, next. So next we have Heather meeting up with Whitney and they're at this like crystal, like spiritual store and immediately they get into it talking about what happened at the party. And one thing that I was very appreciative of this scene is 
both of them apologize for their part. They actually seem like they're evolving, at least them two. I don't know, I don't know if I've ever heard Whitney apologize ever. So that was growth for me. I was like, oh wow, they apologized. She apologized. And then even and 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 then also Heather apologized, but it wasn't that over apology thing that she did before, which was more of a doormat. So in a weird way, I'm gonna just say this kind of quickly and briefly. I think the situations that happened with both Jen, Jennifer, Jen Shaw and the Monica of it all. Because I still, even though I sigh at Heather, I want to like Heather. But I have a tough time liking her because the last season, it gave some prejudice type tones with it. So I don't know, but I think it has a lot to do with how I personally feel about Mormonism. And I'm not trying, I'm trying to keep an open mind, but just when you know, you know the history of it. It is a little problematic, especially if you are black and brown, um, particularly, especially if you're black, um, if you know the history. But I know they moved away from that a long, long time ago, but I, it's hard for me to... Anyway, I'm trying to be very fair when I look at Heather, but one thing I will acknowledge and I think I'm seeing, and hopefully I'm not incorrect because, again, we're just basing on this show... It does seem like Heather is growing to be growing as her own. And she, it, I feel like she kind of needed the show to do that. Cause I don't know with, without this show, she would have done that. I think without this show, we're kind of seeing what she would have been through Brittany, her friend. I think Brittany is literally what Heather was before, um, Heather came around. And we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later, um, sooner rather than later, but if you see it, it makes sense. I think that's what it is. But anyway, <clears throat> so Whitney, um, so basically Whitney does share, okay, we're good now, but I was originally wanting to plan a trip to Milwaukee for a drag show. Because apparently Trixie, the same Trixie that they did the Trixie Hotel thing with last year, he has a drag, um, he has a uh, drag club in Milwaukee. Which side note, maybe because I don't watch Drag Race like that, I did not know that. And now I want to go. <laughs> and y'all know where I live. Milwaukee ain't that far. That's like a two hour drive. I think roughly two hours, not far. Cause I mean, it's just north. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, that sounds like a good time. But anyway, um, <clears throat> but she basically shares, okay, well, so far I can invite you now, Bronwyn and Angie. And then she shares like, yeah, Bronwyn, I really, really like her. We had a one-on-one -on -one and it was great. And Heather is side-eyeing this and she's like, I don't know about that. But then the producers do show that Bronwyn and Whitney met, but it doesn't show really what they all talked about. So we still, as an audience, we don't know. It comes off originally that Bronwyn is just like boosting her, giving her all the flowers, not all. We don't know what the conversation was. So we're kind of looking at similar to how Heather's looking at like, uh because again, Bronwyn, the previous scene was literally just talking cash money ish about Whitney. And y'all producers, y'all good. But anyway, so Heather is reserving her thoughts at the moment. She kind of says something like, okay, I'm not so sure about that, but okay. Like, but she kept it cute. And, but. Yeah, in the confessional, she's like, ooh, that's very two-faced. And we're all, the way the producers produce this, we're all thinking that. I'm saying that for a reason, and I'm kind of spoiling it, but you get the gist. Next, this is a very short scene with Meredith making the bath bombs with Brooks and her daughter. And they basically are talking about Whitney stealing the idea of the bath bomb. 
And then after that, then they then Meredith shares with them that she wants to do a bar mitzvah, and they kind of laugh at her originally, and then she shares why, and they still are side eyeing her. But then they're like, "How did Dad feel about it?" And then they're like, "Yeah, Dad, he was actually happy." And this does sell it for me a little bit more <clears throat> because Seth really been wanting her to like go all in on being, you know, Jewish. Not just being bloodline Jewish, but actually practicing. Because that's what this is all about. It's just really the ceremony for her to practice. To be a, more of a, to be a practice, you know. It sounds like to me the way Meredith is treating it is basically confirmation. To be confirmed. But again, because I'm not familiar with Judaism, I don't know if that's a thing. So, anyway. Next, we have Heather and Brittany, her fr the friend of, and they're playing pickleball together. And then, oh, also side note. So Heather mentioned that she wanted to put, do an event to bring everyone together to kind of help, also to help Whitney with being able to get, bring everyone together for her event. So this is in preparation for Heather's event. Heather's event is basically something physical to bring them all together. Because you already know, Heather's always the one who wants to do something physical to bring everyone together. Like, let's fight it out and then let's forgive each other type thing. That's literally how she always is. Um, it wasn't quite that. It was something else. And um, the invitation was like a, it looked like it was like kind of like a, a FaceTime invitation, which was kind of cool. And um, Brittany's excited. And we find out from Heather that she knows Brittany because she's friends with um, Angie Harrington. And yes, that Angie Harrington, the, com the controversial one, the one who had the husband who had a burner account, that one. Um, <coughs> talking trash about the ladies at his grown age. But <clears throat> anyway, what you will learn, and this is what is eye-opening for me, it seems like the Mormon religion, especially if you're born into it generation after generation. And I don't know if I'm supposed to have this opinion. I kind of feel bad to have that opinion. But it seems like people who've always been Mormon, at least from this show, the way it represents it, and they had generations and generations of it, their growth at least if you're a woman, is very stunted. And I say that because that is what I see when I see Brittany, is that she, her growth seems very stunted. She's very reliant on a man, which is why this whole her and Jared thing's a thing. And she's really excited over this man like she is a high schooler. But she's in her 30s. I, and, and no shade, but it's a rough 30s. I look younger than her, and I'm probably older than her. And I don't think it's black don't crack. It's just, it's see, and then she's also alluded in this episode multiple times that she is going through some things, like things are rough. And I'm curious what all the things are. She mentioned some of the things, like her and her daughter is not good. But she didn't go into detail about it. Um, but again, she's all over the place. And um, Heather is just like, I want to invite her with to this group to bring her in to help her out. But it's like, Heather, I'm side eyeing Heather even when it comes to that. Because I'm like, you should have prepped her when it came to this group. Because I feel like she didn't prep her. And if that's really her friend for real, for, for real, you did not prep her. And you just like literally just sent her to the like to the wolves. And she even says she did that later on. We're going to find out that's what happened. And maybe, I, I'm curious, I don't know if Heather still just has like this. I think it is like a little bit of the Mormon thing. Like if you've always been in that culture, the... The common sense, social common sense, I will say, social norms and common sense of that matter is just simply not there. 
because the women are meant to just idolize the men and be a housewife and don't have education or any of that. That's just how it seems like it is. I don't know if it is or isn't, but it also is. It doesn't help that Heather paints that picture and has been painting the picture, picture when she's, you know, with the bad Mormon and all that. Which, side note, I kind of want to read the book. But anyway, that is how that ends. And also, one more thing, Brittany does stick share that she prioritized romantic relationships over her kids. And that's partially the reason why her and her daughter are not getting along. And I initially was like, yikes. But then Heather actually co-signs like, no, nah, that's actually part of the culture of being, if you're really, really all in and being a, a, a Mormon, a traditional Mormon, you're supposed to... Bring, your husband's supposed to be first, kid second, you last. And if your husband wants something or wants to do something that is not necessarily your kid's interest, you choose a husband's side. And I'm like, wow. She's like, yeah, that's the culture. And apparently, Brittany is still there. So it's like, we basically are seeing Heather... If Heather did not, and this is even how Heather's kind of painting the picture, picture. She's like, this would have been me if I would have stayed in that culture. Right there. I was like, wow. And the reason why I also came up is because they actually were talking about dating also, which is what I, well, was bringing up. So Brittany's all about going from man to man to man to man to man to man to man. My old patterns. And I've shared this before. And Heather is me now where I'm just like, no interest. I'm working on myself. Things are going well for me. A lot of positive good things are happening. And I am not, I am focused on that. <laughs> ah, distractions get out of my way. Um, that's where we're at. And that's where it seems like Heather's at as well. But anyway, that's how that scene ends. I know I kind of dragged that scene on for a little bit. But I do want to give Brittany some grace because we literally just met this lady. And the way things go later on the episode, I felt bad for her. Okay, so then next we have Rowan and she goes to meet up with Angie to get her hair done. Bronwyn appears to be... And again, the producers are kind of painting this picture and I don't know if the producers are painting this picture as a getcha gotcha moment because it's coming off that way. But it comes off that she's a flip flopper because she's talking to Angie, consoling with her about how she sees Angie's side of things um, when it comes to Lisa. Um, but like, I don't know. It, we didn't see the mediator side of it. And that's the thing that, and I don't know if the producers are doing that intentionally or if that's really what it is. We don't see that she's really mediating all way. It just seems, the way it's coming off, the picture that they're painting, it seems like to me that she's just taking on the sides of anyone she talks to. That's how they're trying to present it right now. But... Um, and Angie's like, yeah, I really like her. Because we find out that Angie has already met her. And then she also met her husband. And so Bronwyn actually really does like Angie. But it's just odd to me that she didn't really speak up all the way for Angie when she was talking. Well, no, she did not speak up to, about Angie to um, Lisa when Lisa and her were in the car. But I think we're learning why. Because Bronwyn probably already can see it. And so she's just like, I'm not even going to bother. I think that's what it is. But we'll get into that later on as things progress. But she also does mention that she is not, she don't see it for Brittany. Um, and <clears throat> Bronwyn also shares she does also have some, you know, unresolved issues when it comes to bonding with women. And... Getting to know all these ladies, it kind of feels like college all over again. And she did not have any positive feelings about college because, again, her getting kicked out of college and she going to a super religious college. I can see how that could be a problem. 
Anyway, so now it is Heather's event and it is basically a, t a tight rope event where basically they do all these rope activities, um, not zip lining. Well, you kind of are zip lining, it's like a zip lining thing, but you're doing it where you're doing like tight rope situation. And what was shocking, but I kind of, I hate that the preview spoiled it for me. Almost everyone participated. And I know you're thinking, I'm going to say minus Mary. No, Mary did it too. And I did not expect that from Mary. She did that, but Meredith had an excuse. And I have a feeling this season Meredith's going to get my nerves. Um, because one thing about Meredith is she loves calling Whitney out for not having any accountability, but Meredith is two sides of that coin. If anything, I think Whitney actually does give a little bit more accountability than even Meredith. Meredith is just better at getting out of it because she, attorney, she just be deflecting, changing the subject, and then people forget about it every single time. Except for Angie. Angie has kept that foot on her neck. Um, and I think uh, we're going to see later on. She ain't going to be the only one. And I think actually now I understand why. Because <laughs> of Angie. But anyway. Um, so basically all the ladies did it. Oh, and we also met um, Mimi. I think Mimi or I forgot her name. But it was um, Whitney's friend who barely talked in the first episode. She was there again this episode. And um, I don't know. I think she's going to need to talk more. See, one thing is at least about um, Brittany. Brittany is getting involved more, but she's just doing too much and trying too hard. And it seems like the other one, she's not, she's, I'd be forgetting she's there. And she technically also is a friend of. So we're seeing two sides of how the friend ups can go. But anyway. So afterwards, they get everyone gets down. They they get them down because they all were terrified. I I commended them for that. And also, too, their hands were hurting. And Whitney did make a funny comment that this is like a hand job gone wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, if y'all are not, if you're not used to doing course, like doing upper body strength and doing ropes and stuff like that, and you're, if you're not someone who works out regularly and don't have calluses developed here, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Also, if you have nails um, that are not like your natural nails, yeah, I can see that being a whole entire issue. But anyway, they're done. They go, they get food, they basically have lunch because it's during the day. They have lunch and they have lunch outside. And one thing also to side note, another cast member of this show is Utah itself. And they always film in the winter months. It's always really, really gorgeous. I'm not a winter girl, but I can imagine, I can um, appreciate the beauty of it because it does look beautiful. Um, so they're outside, they have heat, you know, they probably have heat lamps and everything to make it work, right? So anyway. And then as soon as they sit down, the mess starts. Child, the mess be starting. So here, Brittany out of nowhere, unprovoked. And also side note, as they're doing the zip lining, both Mary and Bronwyn are on her about how ditzy she comes off as because she does come off super ditzy. I, I mean, I try to, I was trying to be nice about it, but she does come off super ditzy. And this did not help her case because she immediately starts talking to these women that she don't even know like that about how her and Jared are now official. Only for Lisa and them to go on the Instagram to show that they are not official. And Lisa even tries to show concerns like, girl, y'all are not official at all. And <clears throat> Lisa's the only one that's trying to kind of give grace. And Whitney's even trying to be nice about it too. But them two are a little bit nicer when it comes to new people. Mary was me at this moment. And I know that was probably mean that she was me, but she was me. She's like, why do we care? Because that's how I felt too. I didn't understand why we cared. Because it literally came out of nowhere. And 
And Mary's like, well, we don't know you, so why are you telling us this? <laughs> I'm just like, and yeah, Brittany did not take that well. She was like, rude, and like just very weird about it. And also, too, when she was describing the whole situation, you literally saw this grown woman who, again, the age is not aging properly because she you can tell she's having a rough time when it comes to life. And I no shade, but you can tell. Um is talking like she's like in middle school or high school about this man. And I think a lot of it, yeah, it's the Mormon culture um, and where she's at. She really needs to get herself out of it. But Lisa kind of tried to talk to her about it. So they kind of brushed off what Mary was saying a little bit because they were about to go back and forth. And then from there, then... Like, Heather immediately sees, like, oh, what is this, Mary? Like, do you not want to get to know her? And, like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry. It's just, like, <sighs> I'm trying to be nice about it, but I'm just, like, I'm so, I'm kind of irritated by it. Because I feel like, at this moment, this is where um, Heather is trying to turn around and making it where she tried to turn around on Mary for, for whatever reason. And Mary wasn't being critical for no reason. Like this lady insulted her multiple times by being a bumbling idiot. And I don't, but then she also then had the audacity to want an apology from Mary after she didn't use words properly. And calling her rude for her taking things the wrong way. But it's just like, girl, you call her poor. You don't know nothing about her. And then you call her a hoarder. You actually call both of them a hoarder. I didn't know it was both of them, but Bronwyn took that one if it was hers. But I'm like, okay. Um, and it's just kind of like, you kind of insulted both of them. And so the first impression was not the best first impression. I don't know if Heather didn't know that, but like, she's just like, girl, scoot back. I know that's your friend, but no. And so, and Mary at this moment, she's being rude. She's, she's not really being rude. She's kind of being straight up. I ain't gonna hold you. I feel like she's being straight up, but like, because Brittany and, and she's literally going through some things. She can't handle any of it. And I and Heather can see it. But I feel like Heather, that's when you messed up that you need to, you need you should have talked to your friend before you brought her into this circle. And you you knew better. So then Heather opens up for her friend, says she's going through a lot. I just need y'all to just like I introduced her to this group because she's going through a lot. She needs to escape all this and this and this and this. And then Bronwyn then has the, she then, not Bronwyn, but then um, Brittany's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm having issues. And then like me and my daughter were not doing the best. And that was a comment that she should have kept to herself. Because then everyone's asking, what's going on with your daughter? Well, we're not getting, and then she, she's elaborating, right? But then she realized, oh, I shouldn't be elaborating. I don't feel comfortable doing this. But then that's when like, Mary's like, I'm confused. You were comfortable telling, telling us about your man, but you're not comfortable talking to me, about, talking about what's going on with your daughter. And Mary clocked it. She's like, but Mary, girl, you went to hell with that comment. She's like, you need to be worrying about like repairing your relationship with your daughter and not this man. And I was like, woo. The thing is, see, the thing is, Mary ain't wrong. <laughs> Mary's correct. But that delivery was harsh and you just met her. And so that was wild that she said that. But it needed to be said, but not in that way. And 
Um, also too, you don't even know her. And so it came off as like, you're basically bullying her about her parenting style. But at the same time, again, this is a case of y'all don't know each other. And I think Mary, for the most part, has been kind of on it when it comes to everything. She's like, y'all, you don't know me. So number one, you're assuming I was poor. I wasn't poor. The thing is, and then this is where Mary's like, see, the thing is, I wasn't poor. I had a mom who chose a man over all of us siblings. And so therefore, we lived as if we were poor because she was neglecting us. I was like, woo, damn. I was like, Mary, we're learning more about Mary this season, but Jesus. So clearly Mary was triggered. And so they're going back and forth and it's about to, it's getting ugly before it gets any better. But then Bronwyn chimes in being the voice of reason, but also still checking the girl because she's just like, we want to get to know you, but like you've been coming here with mess from jump. And because... This Britney chick is fragile as all get out and clearly fragile. She is not handling this well either. And she's like, look, you came with us from jump with mess. And you came with us fumbling your words sounding like a hot mess. I need you to understand what words mean. I need you to use them properly and like not do that. Like you call, you called, she was like, you called Mary poor. You called me a hoarder. Like these are very messed up terms. And then like you, you basically, and, and honestly, from their standpoint, it comes off like she was judging them, but in a nice, nasty way, because again, they don't know her. We can see out through the screen that like, yeah, no, she just is, she has issues. Things are not okay. But I'm sure if you're in it, you wouldn't know that and wouldn't necessarily be able to tell because they're all just trying to get to know each other. At the end of the day, none of these women know each other. Um, and the first impression is everything, you know? And so after Bronwyn chimed in, then Heather chimed in and got on Bronwyn. She's like, well, I need you to be transparent and not be two-faced. Because you're saying one thing to one person, but then you were talking all this ish to Lisa about Whitney behind her back. And everyone's like, what? Say what now? And then, in a weird chain of events, <laughs> Bronwyn mentions, I actually told Whitney everything I said. And then the producer showed that she literally told Whitney everything she said. And Whitney's like, yeah, no, I wasn't upset about it because she told me everything she said. And she told me the context of why she said it. So I wasn't upset. Producers, you're... Child! <laughs> I love it. I love it. So then Wendy feels kind of weird about like Heather. She's like, why did you present it that way? As if like she was being two-faced. She wasn't. She told me everything she said. And so Heather just kind of like, but well, I mean, you called your, you called, you're calling one person out. We're overall like, and then when Brown was like, Brown was like, yeah, you called me and me out only. Like you need to make that clear when it comes to the whole group. And Brown got out of that. Like it was nothing. I was like, child. And so, but then from there, it went from Whitney to Whitney and Lisa. And then that, that kicked off again. And then Whitney does finally apologize to Lisa about what she said in the podcast. But she does she did say what she said um, for the most part. So we know it's not really resolved, but they can at least put the podcast talk to rest. Because Lisa is still on this. This is how I am. This is how I talk. Because also, side note, when like Heather is was ganging up on Bronwyn and going off on her, Bronwyn was catching tea. And she's like, Lisa ain't got my back at all when it comes to she's on mute. Oh, okay. Notes. So these dynamics are going to be interesting um, when it comes to the season. 
So Bronwyn felt a way about that. But anyway, then, um, but Whitney's like, I apologize for what I said. But did Lisa apologize for anything? No. Because Lisa still is on this, this is just how I am, this is just how I am. And then also, Lisa did say something I did agree with, though. She's like, I need you to talk facts, not feelings. Because I hate, because also, too, the way Le the way um, Whitney's like, I feel, she doesn't say feel. She's like, feel, healing. She she does that baby talk, it's really annoying. <laughs> So I even hold you. When Lisa said that, I kind of did agree with her. She's like, girl, talk facts. Stop talking about your damn feelings. I don't care. I was like, God. And then it went back, they went back and forth about it. You're a horrible friend. Now you're a horrible friend. But anyway, so they resolved it. They put a pin in for the most part. And then um, Whitney mentions a trip about the Milwaukee trip. And then they're going to get a private plane. Um, and then this, and so we're going to, they're going to go to Milwaukee Everyone seems excited, and then Meredith's like, I don't know if I'm going to go. Because, you know, Whitney and Meredith are not good. Because Whitney, so after Whitney apologized to Lisa, Meredith felt away because she never got apologized from Whitney. And she probably never will. Um, because, yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway... Um, Lee, so not Lee, sorry. Whitney's like, of course she does this whole, oh, no, I'm going to go. Because, you know, that's kind of how, like, um, that is literally how um, Meredith talks. And But that is how the episode ends. And we know she's going to go. Um, also, too, side note. So, like, Meredith also had that excuse of why she didn't want to, like, um, do the um, Zip line thing, which we kind of already knew she was going to do it. But she's like, yeah, I'm tendonitis from churning the butter too much, which we knew that was a lie. It's like, oh my gosh, Meredith. Anyway, but that that does conclude the episode. It was a really, really good episode, as I mentioned. Um, I'm looking forward to the season. I'm looking forward to this first cast trip of them going to Milwaukee. Um, and I kind of knew that was going to happen because I feel like I remember seeing... Um, them at a Milwaukee Bucks game. Because in preview, we find out they do go to Milwaukee Bucks game. Um, because it is the winter month, so NBA season. But anyway, so but that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the villain and nostalgic runner. And I will see you next time. Also, side note, hopefully y'all can't tell or notice, and now you're probably gonna zoom in. I really need to do my eyebrows because I can tell they're looking rough, but we're going to fix them. And this is going to be, yeah, we're almost at the end of that. But anyway, bye.